Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Facebook Live today. I'm Nancy Bronstein. I'm a Brian Viking educator. And today we're going to be talking about the circular attachment, this gizmo here. It is um, a relatively simple looking device, but there's lots of fun things with it. There are lots of fun things you can do with it. And uh, it works on many, many of our machines. I'm going to go over which ones in just a moment. But I, what my plan is, is I, I have done a class on this previously, uh, Facebook Live, and it's available on our YouTube station uh, channel, rather. Uh, but we recently came out with some new templates. So, you know, more fun, more fun for sure. So I'm going to um, go over how to use the circular attachment, first of all. But most of our time will be spent on these new uh, templates. So there's three in the box. There's one where you make hearts and there's another where you make flowers. They look like tulips to me and uh, leaves of different sizes and um, different configurations that you can do with these things. Now, I know a lot of you are wondering, does this work on my machine? Well, on our website, you can download a, a PDF of our um, accessories guide. And in the accessories guide on page five, there is a list of all of our machines and will tell you what classification your machine is. I'm going to be demoing today on the Designer Epic 2, which is a class nine. Now there's two different um, types of circular attachments for the different types of machines that you all have. And on page 38 of the printed manual, it goes over the circular attachment. Let's see if I can get it on the camera. And it will tell you the um, SKU, the number that you would need to order it if your local dealer does not have one in the store, but generally they do. And also, they, that's where you would get these new templates. Now, the um, circular attachment does come with templates, um, but we are not probably going to have time to go over those today. But those templates, um, besides being able to do circles, you can do um, things like these. Let's see if you can get, I can get this in light. You can sort of see the white flowers on this turquoise pillow. The lighting is not perfect. But that's with the original templates that come, come with the circular attachment. But now we have these three new ones that come all by themselves. So they are um, the tulip, the heart, and the leaves. And that's primarily what we're going to be going over. But before I put this away, I'm going to give it a plug. If you have not downloaded this, you should. Because um, not only does it tell you which uh, feet and hoops are compatible with your machine, but each foot and attachment has a guide associated with it in, in the uh, accessory guide. So it's a really good reference tool to have. Um, I have one on my computer and I have one in my sewing room. So I think everybody should have one. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to demo how to use the circular attachment. So it um, looks like this, it has a slider. And it has a push pin that will hold your fabric in place. So basically, if you want a smaller circle or smaller tulip or whatever you're making, you go, um, you press this towards um, this side of the circular attachment, the slider. And there are numbers on here, both um, centimeters and inches. And then if you want a larger circle, you would bring the slider out. And this push pin represents, if you're making a circle, it would be the center of your circle. So <clears throat> what you need to know, though, before you get started, is how to attach it. On your stitch plate, there are two little holes here that are next to the feed dogs. So your um, circular attachment has these right angle pieces of metal. Those go down into those holes. And then that holds it firmly in place. Now, because there is um, there, they, these uh, right angles go into those holes, 
it's advisable that when you have the circular attachment in place that you do not use your cutter because repetitive use of the cutter with this in place will dull the blade. So I'm kind of a creature of habit and I will hit, I, when I'm sewing, as soon as I'm done, I hit the cutter button and I can't, I just can't help myself. So what I do is I put a piece of painter's, painter's tape over my um, cutter button, cutter icon button. And that reminds me not to hit it. Now it's not 100% successful, but it does help me to not um, press it when I really shouldn't because I have the circular um, attachment in place. So first of all, I'm going to show you how you would make a, just a regular circle, and then we'll branch out into the more complicated stuff. Oh, actually, I'll show you a, a sample, too, um, a couple of samples. So some of you have probably seen this before because I, in my last class, I showed this sample. It's a table runner that I was just playing with the circular attachment and did, did different things like I... I used um, a lot of our um, decorative stitches and I did applique, I did reverse applique and uh, just had a lot of fun with it. So um, this is an example of something that you could do with just circles, basically. Circles and half circles. <clears throat> and it's not just for quilting or for cotton. You can also use it. This is a heavy duty vinyl that I made a bag out of. And let's see if I can get a close up on these, um, some of these circles. So this is vinyl with some decorative stitches around it. This is cork, um, some more vinyl. And I used pinking shears around the outside. Some more decorative stitches done in, with the circ circular attachment. So it's not just for cotton. And uh, there's just all kinds of things you can do with this attachment. So how do we do that? I need to get a piece of fabric and then I can demo that for you. So first of all, I would say that you want to, um, even though, even if you're using a straight stitch, I would advise you to put a piece of stabilizer underneath because what the stabilizer does is it kind of, makes the fabric flow more, more easily. You don't want it getting hung up. And when it gets hung up, that's when you, your stitches don't look so good. <clears throat> so I would um, advise you to do that, to put stabilizer underneath. <clears throat> and the type of stabilizer will depend on the project. You know, if you want, if you're doing it on a blouse and it's gonna, you know, the backside's gonna touch your skin, then you probably wanna use something like Whisper Web Mesh, which is, um, very soft and it's like fabric. And I also use that uh, with quilt blocks because it doesn't provide much bulk. Um, or you might wanna use a wash away like Aqua Magic for, for garments. But I'm gonna use tear away today. And um, let me take these pins out and I'll show you how to use this. So as I was saying before, the push pin is going to be the center of your circle. So if I want my circle to be right in the middle of this um, piece of fabric, I would put my push pin there. But I'm going to go off to the side just a little bit and just arbitrarily put my pin there. And I'm going to bring my slider down and uh, do kind of a medium sized circle. So I have the push pin through my fabric, and then I'm going to put the point into the hole on the slider. And um, if I were just doing, um, you know, I wanted a light circle, I could use a straight stitch. Um, I tend to like to use a bean stitch, or it's a triple stitch on my uh, Designer Epic 2. It's in the A menu and it's a, a type of reinforced stitch number 12. The, I'm gonna use that today primarily because for a couple of reasons. One is that um, you'll be able to see it better on the camera because it is a triple stitch. And if I were say doing something where um, I was gonna make this into an applique, when I did my, 
when I did my circle with the triple stitch and then I go to trim really close to it so that um, I can do a satin stitch over it, I'm less likely to cut all of the, the single stitches and then have a gap and then have my applique fabric not being held down. Typically, when you do machine embroidery, what those designs will do is they'll do a single um, stitch around to, as a template for you to put your fabric down onto, and then it does a double stitch. Well, if we do a triple stitch going around, then um, we will have um, the fabric tacked down all in one go. And so, and, and I'm gonna demo how I would do an applique, but right now we're gonna start simple and just do a circle. I also have my open toe for IDF foot on. The IDF is our uh, integrated walking foot that comes with the Epic Two, And um, the walking foot is uh, amazing. I, once you have a walking foot, you never wanna go back to a machine that doesn't have one. But I'm gonna use the open toe because when I do move to using a satin stitch, I feel like I can see it better and see what's going on. And the open toe foot does have a groove on the under underside. Let's see if I can get this near the camera. You're not gonna be able to see this, but there is a groove on the underside so that it accommodates the added height of a satin stitch and doesn't get hung up on it. Okay, so we're, I'm gonna um, just start sewing and you'll see the circle appear. Now, as I'm sewing, I typically kind of pet the fabric to kind of smush it down so that um, it doesn't um, get, uh, I end up with a wonky circle. I just want to just, I don't want to distort the stitches by putting much pressure, but I'm just kind of lightly petting it to keep it uh, so it behaves. And that was a single stitch. I didn't turn on the triple stitch, but then you can see what it looks like. And I'll pull it up so you can see. Now, I would normally just hit that cutter because I have my um, painter's tape on. I not I know that I shouldn't hit it. I should just bring my needle up, bring my foot up, and then use my scissors to cut. Now, the other thing, other tip I'll give you is these little thumbtacks, you should have a place that you put the, always put them in between when you're using the slider. If you just put it at the base of your sewing machine, as soon as you turn your back, it's going to jump off of the table and you won't be able to find it. You have to get down on your hand, it's hands and knees. So either I would say put it back immediately into the slider, or if you have one of those magnetized pin uh, holders, straight pin holders, that, that also works well too. So it doesn't jump off and cause you aggravation. So here's our circle. Now, if I wanted to make um, an applique, um, I would just jump right to the applique. I wouldn't do this first step like you do with machine applique. I would just put my fabric down. And I'm gonna do this on a slightly away from where the um, first circle was. And this time I am gonna put my triple stitch on, which is A12 on the Epic Two. And I'm gonna just start stitching around there. Now, as I'm coming to meet where I started, I kind of slow down because um, if it looks like they're not going to come together um, really neatly, you can kind of influence the fabric a little bit um, so that they do come together. Generally, they will. But if you were not smooth and you're um, going around the circle or if your fabric stretched, it may not meet exactly. But you can, if you watch it, then you can influence it to definitely meet where you want it to meet. Generally, you don't have to do that, but it's wise to look for that. So now I've got this triple stitch going all the way around. And um, what I would do for an applique 
is then trim that all the way. I've got my triple stitch so I can trim really, uh, trim really close to that. Now, I could um, use pinking shears and then just have this be uh, kind of a funky raw edge um, applique, or I could trim it real close um, and not do a, a finishing stitch on top of um, this triple stitch. But I, I would tend to more likely than not trim it really close and then go over it with uh, kind of a skinny satin stitch. Now I'm not gonna do um, a perfect trimming job just so that it's kind of boring to watch people trim their appliques. In fact, I'm just gonna trim part of it. And then we'll, I'll show you what you would do to make, to finish this off. So you have a hole that you can still see. You put your push pin back in there. And then I would go to my stitches and go to the B menu. And I would choose either probably 10 or 11. 10 is two millimeters wide. I would probably bring that up to maybe two and a half or three and then shorten the um, stitch length um, a notch. And then um, I always like to, once I already have some stitches in there, I like to use my flywheel to bring my needle down so that I make sure that it's gonna end up where I want it to be, that the, the fabric hasn't buckled a little bit and uh, so I had done the wrong camera. I, I will bring my needle down manually so I make sure that it's right where I want it to be to go over so that the satin stitch will straddle that triple stitch. And then I just start sewing. bring this up to the camera so you can see it. Now I did not do a bang up trimming job there because it's kind of boring as I said, watching somebody trim their applique. However, and I guess this green thread shows well against the white or the muslin, not so well against the blue, but um, maybe down here you can see it better on the bubble under the light. You can see we've got a satin stitch. And let's see if I can get this in closer. So there's the satin stitch around the edge. So I would just go all the way around the edge and uh, then I would have a finished edge applique or I could have used a decorative stitch or all those things. So that's. That's the basics to doing, um, using just the, the circular part. You can make circles of all different sizes. If I wanted to, I could do another circle on the inside and then cut out the, fat, the blue fabric inside that circle. So it, I'll kind of have a blue donut. Um, I could do it off centered. I could just, I could go inside this circle and, and uh, do some circles of decorative stitches. There's all sorts of things that you can do just on the fly. You know, you just start playing with it and using those stitches that you know are in there and you've never used before and make something pretty with all your wonderful threads. So let's get into the templates that everybody wants to see. Okay, so somebody's asking, why do I have the laser light on? I have the laser light on because I forgot to turn it off, but we are going to use it for the, for definitely for part um, for the tulip template and the heart template. And you'll see why the laser will come in handy, but good eyes. Um, I didn't need it to do a circle. That's for sure. It would probably be distracting to some. I'm going to turn it off. So for those of you that do not have um, a designer Epic two, it does have a laser light, which on the camera is not incredibly, incredibly bright. However, for the sewer, sewist, it is a very good um, tool to have. Um, it's a very bright light. So that you're going to see now when I do the heart, how it's going to come in handy. But for circles, no, I wouldn't, don't think it's of much help. I just forgot to turn it off. Okay, so 
now we're going to use the circular or the heart template. And the heart template is this one that looks like this. I have to say, when I first um, opened up these templates, I thought, oh, yeah, yeah this looks complicated. <laughs> I'm going to have to have a cup of coffee before I tackle this. But then I started using it, and, and it, it really isn't complicated. Um, but it, you know, on first blush, it just looks like, and man, I'm, am I going to be able to figure this out? I don't know. So I'm going to um, change my camera angle. And um, actually, I think I'm just, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch out a heart first. I have pre-marked some fabric. So you can see what the heart looks like after we stitch it out. And then I'm going to use the template to mark another heart so you can see how you create your dots. You have to do the dots. Can't get away. I don't, I just can't imagine you doing it without making the dots. So the dots for heart, once you mark them, and I'm going to go over this with the next heart. It's going to look something like this, where you're going to have these um, dots, and then there's some letters. And um, put this under here. Hopefully, you can see it. Maybe if I pull this in a little tighter. So <clears throat> turn my laser off right now. On the heart shape, you have the, the bottom the bottom of the heart comes to a point, you know, just that's the way hearts are made. You know, you've got this point here. These two parts that are in black, those are just straight lines. And if I didn't have the Epic II with the laser, I would mark those right on my fabric with my dots. You know, I, I have these dots on the fabric already, and then I would draw the line, you know, with a little ruler. But because I have the laser, I don't need to draw these lines. <clears throat> so I start by doing the straight part first. So um, I start from the right and I have a dot there. Um, I like to start right on the dot. So I always uh, manually drop my needle so I know it's right in the, it's gonna start right on that dot. Um, you know, if you are more accurate than I am and you don't need to do that, you don't have to, but that's the way that I get started. So now I'm going to turn this and turn my um, laser on and point it at the, the point of my heart. I think I need to move this camera ever so slightly. And I'm just going to do that triple stitch um, down to, oh, I've still got the satin stitch on. I'm going to do my triple stitch down to this next dot. So once I get to my dot, I'm going to rotate this. And now I'm going to point my laser at this dot here on this side. Then I know that I need, with my heart, what I'm basically going to make are the, the two um, semicircles. So I know that the semicircles are going to meet here in the middle. And this dot here and this dot here are going to be my new pivot points. So I'm going to bring my needle up, cut my thread just so you can see what's going on better. I, I could have left my needle in the fabric and reached underneath and put the push pin in, but I think for um, purposes of showing you how to do this, it um, might be easier to break the thread. And I'm gonna just change, I'm not real happy with that camera ang angle yet. So just bear with me for a moment. That might be a little bit better. Okay, so now we have to put the push pin in the B dot.
And then that goes into our slider. And um, I know that when I measured this um, heart, when I did it on my template, that I chose the six cent centimeter size. So I have to make sure that my slider is on the six on the metal um, piece here. There's um, six through 26 in centimeters and three through 10 in inches. So I'm gonna put it on the six. <clears throat> and then I have to lift this up and stick my push pin in without obscuring your view with my big head here. Yeah, and I can see I'm obscur obscuring it. So I'm just trying to maneuver the, around my cameras and with minimum back of my head shots to get that in there. So now I've got my push pin in that dot that's labeled B. And now I'm gonna turn my laser off because I don't need it anymore. And I'm gonna go back to where I stopped sewing and I'm gonna use my uh, flywheel to drop the needle right where I stopped. And then I'm gonna pivot around to this second dot labeled zero. And I've got some fabric there that I don't want it to get hung up. And let's cut this tail here before we go too much further. Okay, so now I've gone to the to the zero or the zero dot, and I now I need to change my pivot point to the A dot. And cut my tail and get my push pin into the slider. The very smallest setting is a little tight to maneuver it. There we go. And now we'll make the other hump of the heart. Don't want to hit that pin. Now I have, um, of course, made these dots with um, fabric markers so I can iron it and get rid of it. So you won't see all those markings. But now I, I have my circle. And I could duplicate, all, or I could have done this with a decorative stitch rather than the bean stitch. Um, or I could have done it with the satin stitch. Um, you know, whatever your, um, you know, depending upon the project you're making, what you think will look good. So pretty simple. Now I'm going to show you how um, I made a, sort of a double applique with this. So with this little heart, it was going to be a Valentine's Day project that never really got fully finished. But this you know, can show you some of the things that you can do. Um, I have, um, uh, at the very beginning, I took some fabric and I programmed in love in the one of the fonts that's in the sewing menu and just filled filled up this white area with it says love, 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 love. And then I did two um, hearts. Well, I put the, the pink fabric over the white and um, did two hearts, one um, a size six and the other a size eight or ten and then cut out the, the pink fabric on the inside. So I did first the triple stitch with the double heart and I trimmed away the pink fabric on the inside. Then I did the um, satin stitch to finish it off on all the edges. So you know, by duplicating the same shape and um, making it slightly larger or smaller, you can get some nice effects. And I did it through um, two, well, there, you know, this is three pieces of fabric and, uh, you know, it was pretty, pretty easy to do. 
So I was going to put a uh, buttonhole here and a buttonhole there, and a piece of ribbon, and this was going to wrap around um, a new water bottle for my husband, but never got to the store to buy the water bottle. So next year. As you can tell, I go all out on Valentine's Day <laughs> buy him a water bottle. Uh, okay, so <laughs> somebody asks, what is the biggest size circle? The biggest size is 10 inches or 26 centimeters, which is pretty large. I mean, if you look at this table runner, I'm not sure if this is, the, if this is either the largest circle or it is, let's see if I can get it in the camera. I'm not doing very good with this. Maybe if I back up, I know what I do, change the view. There's that, that's much better. So you can see it's pretty big. And, um, you know, so you can do um, from this size to this size. Now, let's see, we've got, we did the circle. Now I want to do the tulip. Now the tulip is a little bit more complicated, but let me find the template here. Actually, I want to go over something on the template for the circle first, and then we'll move to the tulip. So I'm going to go over to my camera over here and just kind of review what we did with the circle. I mean, with the heart. So, <clears throat> when I mark things, first of all, I chose my circle, uh, my um, heart size, and I wanted to make the smallest one, which is a six. And the way that I marked this, I found the sixes on my template here. So I've got a six here. I know I'm gonna put a dot there. And I'm gonna follow that up, the sides of the heart, dot there. And then I'm gonna go, I have a six here, and I go over here, and the zero, and the six here, wherever there's a six, and over here. Now, these dots here, they're just basically showing the arc of this circle that forms the top part of the heart. When you have a six with a, a circle underneath it, these ones are where you're going to put a push pin. So um, just be aware, don't skip that one. That's the uh, pivot point to make your circle, I mean, your, uh, the top part of your heart. You know, your heart's going to be something like this. when you stitch it out, of course, a lot more attractive than my drawing skills, but um, your push pin's gonna be here and here to be able to make these arcs. And this is the straight stitch that I did using the laser. <clears throat> now I just wanna wipe that marker off before it dries. Now we're going to do the a tulip. <clears throat> and the tulip, let me show you a picture here. Just bear with me a moment. Hmm. Ah, here it is. Okay, so our tulip is going to look like this in the corner. Well, let's go to this camera. Just like that, pretty much. That's the shape that we're going for. So we have this arc, we have this arc, we have two arcs there, and an arc down here. So I'm going to show you on the template and it might make more sense. <clears throat> the 
that is once I find the template that I laid down here, I am working in such a small space, it's unbelievable that I could misplace something, but here it is underneath another template. Okay. So this looks complicated, doesn't it? But it really, it's not that complicated. So this is all sorts of different sizes. Actually got it backwards. And um, we're gonna make a small tulip first. Um, and to make the tulip, if we do the smallest one, we would choose the where there's a, a, a hole to make a mark wherever there's a six. And what we're gonna end up stitching is we're gonna stitch here. This is not showing up as well as the black, I don't think. So we're gonna stitch across here. That's the straight stitch. And we're gonna stitch in an arc here and here. There's our straight sides. And then this is actually one arc. Then we move our pin and here's another arc. And then we have um, the rounded edge down below here by using the zero spot as um, the pivot point on the circular attachment. And then if we wanted to make a bigger one, we would go to these bigger, um, go out further with the holes to make the dots. And this kind of shows you the steps to, to making this. So let me get the marker off. And I'm gonna make these marks to stitch this out. So <clears throat> I'm gonna do it on my six. And then I'm gonna go up to the corner and I'm gonna to go to this point, and this point, and this point, and this point, and the zero. And we gotta make sure we get these sixes down here because these ones are what um, you know create um, the arcs here and here. <clears throat> now I'm just gonna make these dots a little bit darker so that you can see them on the camera. And I missed one dot over here. Now, um, the first thing I'm going to do is do, do a straight line here with the laser. And then I'm going to do the loop around and do the straight line over there. So I'm going to bring this over to the sewing machine. <clears throat> and my camera angle got, camera got bumped, I guess. That's better. And actually, yeah, I'm going to keep it with a, a triple stitch. And the first thing I'm going to do, though, is my straight line. So I'm going to turn my laser on. I'm going to go up to this corner point. Use my flywheel to get my needle right in the center of that point. Because you, uh, the reason why I do that is that you've got this big bump here. And depending upon how the fabric is laying across that bump, I find that if you just drop the needle, sometimes it's off by, I don't know, a sixteenth of an inch or something. And if you're going to cover it up with satin stitch, it's no big deal. But I just prefer to get it right where I want it from the get-go. So I'm pointing the laser to this point, and I'm going to stitch down there. And put my needle down. Then um, I, I am going to be rotating around here. So I need to put my push pin in. And I'm going to put it in, this is actually the zero dot, the dot that had a zero next to it. And I'll put that over into the, the slider. And then I'm going to make this half circle here. Thank you. 
<clears throat> now I have my straight line here to match that one. Cut this thread here. So point my laser at the next dot. Okay. <clears throat> so <clears throat> now we have two curves to do. So I'm going to um, go into this push pin or put my push pin. Actually, I'm going to put my push pin over here first in this dot. And let's bring the foot up a little bit. Maybe I can get this in here more readily. And I apologize for when my head gets in the way. I've got four cameras going here. So it's a little bit awkward. So we've got, there we go. So now this is going to make a kind of a gentle arc there. <clears throat> Pull this out. And then we're going to go to the opposite side here. So I forgot to mention that the instructions have some pretty good diagrams of, um, you know, how to do all these steps, uh, which are kind of hard to show on this camera. This is too dark, but there are there are multiple diagrams in there for each of the templates. <clears throat> so now I'm going to go and do the other petal. <clears throat> and we're going to have to bring the needle out because we're going to do these two areas right there and there. So I need to cut my thread. So I've got my two dots. These both had a six next to them on the um, template. So that means there's going to be a pivot point there that would stick into the slider. And then we go up to this point right at the top. And then we're going to stitch to this point. And then repeat it on the other side. We got to move this over to this other dot. Get it in the slider. Okay. And we're going to go from this dot to that dot. So I'm going to just drop my needle down slowly and then start to sew across here. Now, I, of course, would have done a much neater job starting and stopping if this were an actual project. But I just want to demo the um, basic steps on how you do this. So here's your tulip. Um, and um, you can, there's a lot of fun things you can do with the tulips. You um, can make it into an applique, and um, I'm going to um, show you that. So I have a tulip that I previously, I, I marked it just like I did that one. And instead of um, stitching out on the, on the uh, muslin, 
I laid a piece of purple fabric down and put the marks on the purple fabric, did the triple stitch, and um, then cut it out. So I've got, you know, a basic applique here, and I certainly could finish it off um, with a um, satin stitch, or I'm going to show you another stitch that I, I like to use. But I decided I wanted to make a tulip inside of the tulip to give it more interest. So what I did is I, I'll show you how I marked it. So I took my <clears throat> template and I wanted to put a smaller tulip on the inside. So I just laid this on top of the other one and remarked it so that now I have my dots to make a tulip inside of the tulip. So I have these dots here, and then this is going to be a pivot point, and this is going to be a pivot point. And you'll see what I mean as I'm stitching it out. Now I'm going to show you one that I did already so you can see where we're headed. <clears throat> Actually, it might be easier to show you right on this pressing cloth. So here's a double tulip that I did. So I just basically did one applique and then did a smaller um, design on the inside with a decorative stitch. And I used a um, originally a triple stitch and then when after I trimmed it, I put a narrow satin stitch. And then I did um, a narrow triple um, zigzag around the outside and it gives it kind of a, a lacy look. I don't know if you can see that on the uh, camera. And um, this is the completed flower. The stem is made from a piece of ribbon and this is with the using the last template that I'm gonna show you. So this is a uh, a nice way, sort of an alternative to doing other types of applique. Like I um, am just recently made a quilt that incorporated needle turn applique with a similar kind of design with the flower. And um, to be honest, um, the process of making, doing needle turn does not float my boat. It's a little too um, fussy. So I think that um, the next time I make that quilt, I'm gonna make the tulips with the circular attachment template. So I'm gonna bring the um, purple tulip back over and show you how I made this pink one. Um, okay, so how I have a question. How do you fix the holes from the pin? When I find that if I hit it with a steam iron, pretty much closes up. Um, I don't, and, and certainly if you wash it, it's going to be gone. Um, I don't notice them after the project's done and it's been laundered. Um, you know, if it's cotton, um, I think on the vinyl, you might see it. Um, and you probably want to put something decorative over that hole, but um, you see, actually, I don't think it's all that noticeable, even on the vinyl. Um, each of these circles had a pushpin in the middle, and I don't see where they were.
Hey, Nancy, we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, okay, so I'm taking off my fancy uh, microphone and just going with the laptop mic. I'm not quite sure what happened there because it doesn't look like it ran out of juice, but we'll worry about that later. So I'm not sure where you stopped being able to hear me. Hopefully it wasn't too long ago. Um, and so now we're gonna, I'm gonna do, um, a design on top of this applique to show you how um, I made the, the pink tulip. And I'm using a narrow satin stitch. <clears throat> uh, when I was showing the leather bag, what I was saying when I was showing the leather bag is that there were um, no pinholes in the in the in, they should have there's a pin in the center of each of those circles on the leather bag and i i mean even with my naked eye here not through the camera i can't i don't see where the pin hole went so i don't think it's something you need to worry about <clears throat> so i'm just going to um continue with this smaller tulip inside the larger tulip and you get a chance to see how that is done again. If I have the right camera on. Now I take this out, use my laser. So I see that time-wise, we I don't know if I have really time to do the whole tulip inside here. It's basically just doing the same thing that I did on the outside, but I would like to show you how um, I did the um, decorative effect on the outside of the tulip and then move over to the um, leaves. So you see how to use the leaves before we run out of time. But basically I'm just following the dots like I did for the, the big part of the tulip. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna do one side and show you how to get that decorative effect. So. <clears throat> I'm going to start by putting my needle down and I'm going to make a slightly wider satin stitch here. So I did a satin stitch all the way around on the pink flower. Then I went into my menu here and I found um, this triple um, zigzag stitch and I made it smaller and shorter. And Actually, I think I used this one. I think it's gonna, gonna get, end up in the same place, but just for consistency, there we go. So now I have this triple zigzag that's kind of small <clears throat> by making the stitch width and the stitch length smaller. And uh, then I just took that and did it around the outside of my satin stitch. And I see on my screen here, not that screen, on this screen, there's a dot. It's showing me that the zigzag is gonna start on the left side of the zigzag. It's not gonna start on the right. 
So I know I, I, I know exactly where it's going to start here. And I can start doing that decorative effect on the outside here. And for this, the rest of it, I would use the push pin. This was just the part that we did with the laser. And I just like the way that it gives it this sort of frilly look. I'll bring it over to the other camera. Hopefully you can see it a little bit better. <clears throat> so here's the, the pink version and then the green version that I just did. And it, it just gives it a nice, um, I don't know, decorative effect. It also, if your satin stitch isn't perfect, it kind of covers up the imperfections. So it's a nice thing to have in your toolbox. So now it's time to move on to the leaves. So the leaves can be done with just a single leaf, or you can have the leaf be more of uh, like a double leaf like this. I kind of like the way that looked, so I decided to do two leaves in, at, at once. Um, I think what I will do when this is a uh, quilt block is I will do it this way, and then I'm going to use some uh, Derwent ink tense pencils to darken this side so that it, you know, it kind of gives it a shading effect. Um, I use these on a lot of projects. I love them. They um, are pencils that when you add um, fabric medium to them, it gives it a watercolor effect. So you just make a little, you know, um, uh, shading on the underside of the leaves and it just adds a certain depth to it. And once you use the fabric medium, it is permanent. <clears throat> okay, so now we're gonna do the leaves. Gotta get the right template here. Ah, put it back here. Okay, so it's the template that looks like this. And I'm gonna show you how I would do the marking. I'm gonna do double leaf like I did before. Now this one is a little bit different in that um, the way it's designed, you, you're gonna do the zero point like the other templates. And I'm going to do the double leaf. So I'm going to do one here and one here. And this is the A leaf. And then this is the B leaf. So I have to color in the A, make an A dot, and then a B dot here. And I do the same thing on this side, the A and B, and then these. Now, these dots are for the end of the leaf. These are going to be pivot points. So I'm gonna make these a little bit bigger so that I know those are pivot points. And same thing on this side. This is gonna be a, uh, where I put the push pen is what I mean by pivot point. Now, there are two other dots we cannot forget. And they are these ones way out here on the sides. I don't know if you can see that. It's way, there's one dot way over on, right over, over here and then one way over here. They're marked 26. So these dots over here, now they're not gonna come out because my iron is not hot. Didn't want them to be distracting, but just live with it. So now we're gonna make some leaves. So I'm going to start by putting my um, pin in the zero point and putting it into my slider. Now, if I wanted to make if I wanted to make this an applique, 
I would have put my fabric on top of the muslin and marked the, the fabric. I'm just gonna go ahead and just do it on the muslin because we're running out of time here. And actually let's start down up here with one of our A and B points. So I had made the A and B points a little bit darker. So I'm going to stick this in here. And then we're going to sew from, oh, I know it's why it's looking wonky. I have to make, put the slider out to make the big leaves. The leaves are all out to the maximum point that the slider goes. So you push it all the way to the end. That's why I was thinking something's not right here. Okay, so I've got my slider, my uh, slider all the way out and my pivot point on um, my uh, dot over there. I have a dot here and I'm going to stitch right over to the zero point. <clears throat> and I got to put my triple stitch back on. So you can see it. And start sewing. this tail now we'll put it in one of these larger dots on this side put it into the slider So we have um, part of the leaves done. Now I'm going to put it in the other point over there and bring my, I'm going to cut my bobbin thread here. Bring this back down here to my zero point. Get this in the slider. And actually, let's just double check. If you're ever wondering where you're at, you just, just go do, just circle it, move it out along the pivot point and see if it's going where you think it should go, which it does look like it is because it's going to my dot. If it goes someplace other than that, then you you're, need to rethink what you're doing. Do the other side, same thing. After I pick it up from dropping it on the floor. So, put my circular attachment back in. sure which one of these we already did so I'm going to have to see where it swings see if I'm in the right hole or not that looks like the one we already did so we'll move it over to this hole and come back here okay put my needle into the dot
Now, if this were an actual pro um, project, I would fix the thread at the ends, you know, either by going into reverse or hitting the fix button, but you know, we're just demoing the technique right now. So now we need to go to these crazy dots way out here in the middle of nowhere on the sides for the last part. And they're going to, this is gonna finish off the leaf and you'll, it'll start to look like a leaf. So I'll put my needle down. over to the other side. So I have a question. Will you show it finished? Um, do you mean um, finished as in this leaf that I'm stitching right now? I'm not quite sure what you mean by it. So if you would clarify, I will show you whatever it is you want to see. Okay, so here's our leaf. And as uh, let's bring it over to this view. You might be able to see it better. Get the bobbin thread cut. So here's your, um, here's the, the leaf. Now, um, if you want to uh, hang around a little bit, I will um, show you a couple of stem techniques. I'm going to go a little bit over here. Um, <clears throat> so I have this ribbon feet set, and I'm going to use the uh, number two foot to stitch a piece of ribbon down to be a stem. Um, if you didn't have a ribbon foot, you could use a piece of maybe steam a seam or something like that to tack the ribbon down so it doesn't end up being wonky. The um, advantage of the ribbon foot is it has a slot in it that the ribbon fits into and um, it holds the ribbon in place. <clears throat> and let me show you what that looks like again. So this is using the ribbon foot. And what I did is I actually used 12 weight thread with a top stitch needle to give it kind of an organic look. And I stitched down the middle of the ribbon and I did the replace the ribbon before I did this or, or the leaves. Then I did a blanket stitch along the edges and then did a couple more rows of stitches to give it more sort of texture. So that's one way to make a, um, a stem, and I'll show you how you do it with this foot. <clears throat> so I just have regular sewing weight thread in here, so it's going to look a little bit different. But the um, foot has a slot right here so that you can stick the ribbon in there, and it's held pretty securely. So you can do all kinds of fancy schmancy things with these feet with the with ribbon. So a piece of fabric back over here. And I just did a um, triple stitch down the center. Now I can use my thread cutter, yay, because I took up took off the circular attachment. Boy, it's nice to have that back. Then it will look a little bit wrinkly at this point until you tack it down with the blanket stitch. 
<clears throat> so then I went back and put my open toe foot on and move my needle over to the right. And did the blanket stitch. Down one side. And not doing the whole thing just to save time because we're going over time here. Nope, too far in. So I move the needle over so that it's it's gonna um, stitch along the edge and then just bite in ever so slightly to tack down the ribbon. <clears throat> so then I would go back and I do a couple more lines of if I wanted to, of just straight stitch to give it more depth. Um, let's bring it back over here. It seems like this looks a little clearer on the camera. So you get a, a nice thick stem, or there's one more technique that I'll show you that you can do with the open toe foot if you want a thinner stem. <clears throat> I'm going to just put a straight stitch. I'm going to load a straight stitch right in the middle. Put my needle down. I believe Marsha Kirsch came up with this technique. If I if I'm remembering correctly, she's another educator. She should get the credit. I did not develop this. So you loop your your yarn around the back of the needle, and you just cross it over. Take a few stitches. Cross it over, take a few stitches, cross it over, take a few stitches. And if you want, you can kind of make it curvy, you know, so it looks more like a stem, organic stem. I would probably make a mark or draw a line, a curvy line to follow. But I'll show you what it looks like. It's a pretty fast stem that you can make. Gives it some texture. I'll do the close up on that. And then, if we have any questions, now or never, because we are over time. So, we have the, the thick stem, and then we have this more um, soft, um, curvy stem <clears throat> to, to make with your tulip. So I guess there's no um, questions, but I am being told to remind you about some Facebook Lives that are coming up. We have uh, a MySonet Live March 8th at 2 p.m. Central Standard Time with Amy, Back to Basics training. Then uh, March 1st is the next Who's Far in a Viking uh, Facebook Live, and that will be at 2 p.m. Central Standard Time with Dee Marie on Metal and Endless Hoops. So um, I will be monitoring this um, Facebook Live, the, the chat area, after we close this session for about a week. If you have any questions, I will answer them. And um, you, I'm sure you all know that after um, the Facebook Live is over, it's also placed on our YouTube channel, which I think it's easier to find on there. And you could watch um, it anytime you want. And um, you know, if there's a part you forget how to do, you just go back to that part. So I, I really appreciate you joining me today. I know we all lead busy lives and I appreciate you coming and um, learning with me about the new templates. So uh, happy sewing.